Hi everyone, it's Sarah from Plan Sarah Plan, and today we get to look through the Erin Condren Back to School Collection for 2022 and 23. They always seem to come out with something fun and unexpected with their back to school launches, and this year is no exception. In my box, which was sent to affiliates to share with their audiences, is this new blush calculator. So let's open it up and see how it feels, how it works. Okay, so this calculator has several standard functions, kind of basic ones. You've got on or all clear, grand total, and this button is not on basic calculators very often. This moves you over, it moves the whole number over a decimal point. The division sign, memory recall, memory plus, memory minus, multiplication or times, minus, addition, equals, decimal point, and then of course numbers. So it works like, you know, you'll have to kind of study how you use some of these functions, but for me, I usually use something like this for my budget or my checkbook, and you know, you've got, you can put your decimal point in there, and you can, I already had a number in there apparently. Let's do it again. Yeah, 125.50 plus 68.99 plus um, 78.30 equals. And there you go, there's your grand total. And I think I could have also just pushed GT for that grand total. So it's a cute calculator. It's not a fancy adding machine or anything. Looks like you've got your battery area right here, but it does come with a battery. And it's a blush color. So it matches this or this vegan leather blush cover, or you could have it stored on your desk in a nice acrylic organizer, like it fits in this little stand-up slot perfectly. This is the Erin Condren Acrylic Perpetual Desk Calendar, and it fits in there absolutely beautifully. If you need to grab a calculator often, you could actually put your phone and your calculator in here. They would both fit. If you have one of these desk organizers that are more of the cardboard type, um, fits in this and you can even I think put it in this pocket if you sort of turn it diagonally so it's basically just cute it looks nice with your other accessories that might be rose gold or blush and this is just a little tray that I use in my office space or in my planner castle um, where I took the inside of this kind of old brass tray and lined it with mid-century circles wrapping paper. Your child could fit it in their backpack easily, you could fit it in your purse easily, or it can just go on your desk without taking up too much room. So in short, if blush is your aesthetic, this is something you might wanna go ahead and just add to cart. And let's go on to the next item. If you are a fan of the Erin Condren gold medal ruler, then you're probably going to be a fan of this new bookmark ruler, which is larger than the previous one. So let's get it out and try it. It definitely has a nice stick out. So if you have a hard time seeing the mini snap in bookmarks and you want something larger, or if you want to use both and this is maybe your current week, then it works great. I've just hooked it onto one sheet of paper and did make a little indention, but I don't think it would have done that if I didn't push it all the way down, but you would probably want to push it all the way down just for the functionality of it. And then you could also go the opposite direction and I like that. Oh, I like that even better. I like that even better. So this is a neat item. I really love page holders that are page markers that stick out and are sturdy. And this is very pretty with the asterisk being the part that's out. It's gold metallic and it's neato. But you know what? I'm just also thinking there's another function for this that we might try, like drawing lines. Let's try something, but let's just kind of play with this a little bit. If you draw a line here, just for fun, we want to see what we can do with this bookmark ruler of this bottom one and see. Now, they're still not evenly spaced that way, so maybe this is not the best use for it. But let's do the bottom, then the top, then the top, and see if that's even. No, so they're never going to be even. But you could, oh, here's a fun thing. Let's try this. This makes a really long kind of super skinny oval. 
could draw one of those. I don't know why you would ever want one, but anyway, you can if you want. And for that matter, you could do, like if you want to write in your planner and draw, call attention to something, like maybe there's a line right there, and you could do that with it. Oh yeah, you could do this and you could put the time. I think we should go the other direction though. So let's do this. And then go like that. You could put a time in it or you could go that way, either way. So this is, you know, it's just fun. It's another ruler. This one does have inches as well as centimeters and millimeters on it. So you have 15 centimeters or five inches marked out for you, but the actual ruler is longer than that because zero to five inches is between my two fingernails here. So I like this fan right here. I'm a fan. Here is a new product for A5 Ring Agendas. These are dividers and it says it's a four pack and color blends. I don't know if there will be other styles, but you guys, without like starting a big revolution or anything, I noticed something that I don't know if it's a mistake or not, but do you see what I see? This is the traditional vertical layout punched for six holes beside this very divider. Now you can take that to mean what you like. Either the Erin Condren team got a little confused and forgot that they don't offer a vertical layout except for the compact vertical layout for the agenda. But anyway, I mean, somebody's gonna notice it if I don't, so there you go. That to me is huge news if that's coming. If it's not coming, it's poor packaging. <laughs> so let's take these out and see what, oh, it says it comes with 12 tab stickers. Here's what we get. So if there is a purple or lavender color blends and then a blush one, that one's gorgeous, like a sunset. This is a blue one and your tab is in a different spot for each one. So you get from left to right, four different tabs little Aaron Condren asterisk. On the back, it's the exact same thing. All right, and then we have on this sheet of tabs, we have some blank ones. Looks like there are eight blank ones that you can just write what you want to. And these would fold over the tabs. So let's get one out and try it. Let's go matchy matchy. Yes, so that is kind of arched over the same way the tab is, and then you would just fold it over and write what you want to. I'm going to be using these, I know already. Um, this is exciting. The ones that have words on them, there are just four at the bottom, and it has gold metallic writing. So one is notes, one's lists, important, and today. So the today one is in purple. You could put these on any though. Like that's purple too. It's more like this, this one, this pinky purple. Okay, so there's one in each of these colors. Sorry, I just didn't catch that right off the bat. So your Today tab could be this one, and you could keep it in your um, Six Ring Agenda and just mark your Today with that if you want to, although it does come with the ruler now, which you might also be using as your bookmark. But this is a great functional product that you could use with any Six Ring Agenda. It wouldn't even have to be an Erin Condren Agenda. So if you want to add some dividers, to your to your rings, your A5 size rings. This is a great product. Should we place some into my agenda just to see what they look like? All right, so Erin Condren has lots of agenda styles. This one is called In Bloom. I'm gonna try to bring in a little bit more light. This one's called In Bloom and it's kind of pale uh, purple on the outside and then blush on the inside. And I've customized mine already with a um, seven by nine interchangeable cover that I trimmed down and punched to be the front and the back of my agenda to protect the pages. So these, let's just hop into September since this is a school, a back to school item. And we're going to pop one of these in. So when you close it, it would stick out that much. It's perfectly placed. So the tab would stick out where you can see it. So let's put them all in and maybe go back to October and put one. This is the compact vertical layout. So that's a different layout than it's on the packaging. 
of this product. So the packaging has me very interested. And I did ask my Erin Condren contact about this and I have not heard a response, which makes me think it was either a mistake or it's top secret. I don't know. I don't know. So if we close this, the tabs would stick out like that and it wouldn't interfere with your side tabs. I think this is a wonderful product. And I love the fact that you have a combination of tabs that you can write on and tabs that are tabs that are already written in with gold metallic. So this is a great product, but one more peek at that thing that's got me all giddy, giddy here. And I hope you can see this. See the layout that's on the packaging? That's the traditional vertical layout that people have been asking for in the A5 size. So uh, you tell me. Is this a mistake or is that a product that's coming or maybe some inserts are coming? I don't know. So when you close your agenda, it just has this kind of a look with the tabs at the top. Hopefully you can see that. All right, let's go to the next product. Here are two new styles of the Snap-in dashboards that are two-sided. This one says school tracker on the front and it has a schedule on the back, long-term assignments, upcoming quizzes next week. This one says projects and exams on the front and on the back, it's just a continuation of that, but you do have long-term assignments and upcoming exams. But how would you write on something this dark? So if you have an Erin Condren notebook or planner, or like an academic planner especially, these will snap right into the coil. And I mean, they'll fit all the planners equally well. However, the academic planner is more along the lines of this. This has gold metallic writing on it, and they're both color blends, just different colors. This, this is just really neat. You've got your class schedule here, or no, it's not a class schedule. You put the class in which an assignment is due, and you put the assignment in this column, and then you put the due date here and check it off when it's done. Top priorities, open space, and then here's where you could put your schedule or just an outlook of what your schedule is for the week long-term assignments, quizzes, tests, and next week. But again, back to my question, how do you write on these? Apparently, this is how you write on them. So these are new. Fine Tip Wet Erase Markers 3-Pack. It says, write on dark, wet erase surfaces, wipe off, and repeat. So it says you shake it, then you have to press the tip on a wet erase surface several times until the ink flows, and then test before writing. So if we mess up, we can just wipe it off. So we won't have to really worry about testing. We're just going to um, try it. So you can hear there is a ball in there or something to help mix the ink or paint or whatever it is. I wonder if it's gonna have a smell. Okay, and it has mid-century circles, outlines on the outside. It looks interesting. It looks like a ballpoint pen or a gel pen. Look at that. I'm very curious about how this is going to work. So let's pump it several times to get the ink flowing. Not flowing yet. Da, 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 da. Here we go, okay, there we go. So let's just write Sarah. Oh my goodness, this writes like a dream. This is not a marker, this is a pen. It says it's a marker, but look, it's it works like a, like a ballpoint pen. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I love this thing. I wonder if you can write on other dark things with it, like not just wet erase. Let's take my Laurel Denise darker sticky notes here. Not as well. Oh yeah, well, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe it really needs to be a slick surface. Or some of the dark stickers, I wonder if it would work. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to work on a, on a porous surface. You've gotta, gotta use it on one of these surfaces. Okay, so, and we can just wipe that off. Wipe that while that, look, stays, unless you really rub hard. Look at that. Trying to get the glare off for you. Okay, so we have a project. This is going to be a presentation. Oh, it writes beautifully. Presentation with my team. And the deadline is 
going to be November 3rd. And then the class is going to be business models, just made that up, 630, very high level. And then important dates, we're going to show our outline on 10-3. And then when we complete it, we can check this little dot. This writes beautifully. So let's dry it and see if it smears. Not smearing. Now I'm not pushing super hard, but you can hear. Look at that. Now let's push kind of hard. Not coming off. I love it. I love this pen. I love this pen. Testing. 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 It is fabulous. This is a great pen. It seems like a scientific breakthrough, but it's a metal tip and this white ink comes out. I wish it worked on, on dark stickers though. And if you did not get your cover personalized and you want to, or at the end of the year, if you want to archive a planner and you want to write the year on it, this is a great way to do that. Nice way to do it. All right, next up, I had to really zoom out to fit this all onto the desk here and into the frame of the camera, this brand new product. Repositional weekly whiteboard and notepad. Dry erase and wet erase, restickable whiteboard, 18 inches by 12 inches, and refillable notepad, four inch by nine inch, 25 sheets. So let's get this out and play with it. Here is what it looks like. And when you feel it, it's a little bit surprising because it's foamy. It's like cushiony feeling. And on the back, you've got this area here where it's like a, a peel off, kind of thick peel off surface. And then you actually stick this to a smooth surface where you want to put it. So it could be a refrigerator or a smooth wall or the side of a filing cabinet or any smooth surface, um, even in like a child's bedroom, they might have a place where they can use something like this. And apparently it, it won't damage your walls. At least it says that it is repositionable. You just carefully peel it off and then you can use it again. But if I were you, I would keep this peel off backing because you wanna store it with that on it. And you could even use it as a desk pad. You really could, it's cushiony. And if you had something that you wanted to, if you had a piece of paper and you wanted to write, oh, this is a nice surface. Remember when I used to do my videos upstairs in our dining room on a blue leather surface desk? That's, this gives you a very similar feeling and it doesn't seem to, like it didn't push through that paper, so it's not going to damage this. I imagine you could damage it if you pushed really hard, but, so it's got Monday through Thursday up here, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and reminders, and then a to-do, to-buy, so you can decide if this is a to-do list or a to-buy list, and just circle one or color in one of these check marks. You see that? To-do and to-buy, and how does this, okay. It looks like it has a pocket, so let's just pull that out, yeah. So I've got a bunch of Erin Condren notepads. I could actually, you know, if you wanted to put something a little bit more cutesy that has design on it, decoration on it, less functional looking, I think this is going to work with any of the notepads that Erin Condren has that are this size. There we go. And you could also leave it out. If you wanted to just write on that surface, you could, and just leave the pad out, right? You, know, you can barely see this little slot. So let's check it out. Erin Condren does make wet erase markers. So these are the fine tip wet erase markers. I didn't get all the colors out. I just chose a few. So let's say that I am going to work on my student schedule. Um, I'm going to just make up names. These are not actual students. So this is going to be um, 3.30 Johnny. Seems to be writing fine, really well. 4 o'clock Susie. You like my creativity here? 
I'm using the traditional so-called, like, you know, most commonly used names for kids, Bobby. And I'm really going back to the 70s. I'm a child of the 70s. Uh, Cindy. 530. Jimmy. Now let's go Jim Bob. And then at 6 o'clock, we're going to finish off with... Mary Ann. All right, so it writes fine. Now let's see what happens. It stays on there fine. So you would just use a wet, like a baby wipe or a wet paper towel to clean that. And if you used a Sharpie, you would probably be able to get it off with an alcohol wipe, but I have not tested that on this one yet. So if you used black, 330, bow. I have zero students named these names. Four o'clock, this is gonna be Biff. And 4.30, these guys have names that make you think they don't, They just wanna get outside and wrestle and play sports, but actually they're uh, very sensitive musicians. Um, Bo, Biff, um, now Blake is a more common name now, but I don't have any Blakes in my studio. And Belinda, I have never had a Belinda. Um, this is just too fun, making up names. You really don't need this much of a pen test, do you? Um, Briar, is that even a name? All right, six, Blair, there you go. Now I'm not going to do this on every single day. Let's just kind of see what different colors look like. So this is Fuchsia, and this one is blue, and I will pull it up to the camera to let you see better. This is a neat thing. Now, I would be tempted to leave it on my desk, honestly, but you can stick it up on the wall and reposition it, and supposedly it will not damage your wall. And it's got this cool, foamy feeling to it. It's just got a little bit of... Um, you know, it's only this thick, right? You can't really see a huge thickness, but it's cushiony in there. So there you go. And I bet you could even write on the backing. Shall we try it? So it could just be a plain whiteboard if you want it to. I can teach kids note values on this. So it's neat. It's neat, and then you just clean it with a wet paper towel. And you can stick it on a surface, pardon me, or not. Leave it on your desk if you want to. I might be leaving this on my desk. So this is the kind of notepad I'm talking about. The list pads that I think come in two packs at Erin Condren. This would also work, right? Yeah, so you could make it more colorful if you want to, and if you've picked out your pattern for the year, like Harmony or In Bloom or, Flora, like look how well Flora would go with this, or in bloom. You could choose this kind of a notepad instead of the kind of functional one that comes with it. Now I am thinking, FYI, this is just a little trivia, this paper feels different, and I'm not positive that it is, but it feels different. I wonder if this is recycled paper here. It might be. I mean, that's that's great, and it's fine, especially for a to-do list. Um, or for a shopping list. So we want to get some butter. We want to get some oat milk. Have you ever had an oat milk latte, you guys? It's so good. And let me zoom in so you can see. This this paper is just, I think it's recycled paper, honestly. 25 sheets, but it's thick. And it's got kind of a gray cast to it. Um, let's get some pecans. Some coffee. Whereas when you write on this one, it's probably going to be exactly the same thing. Butter, oat milk, pecans, and coffee. So, you know, just if anybody was curious how these write, this one's slightly smoother than this one, just slightly. So say hello to my new desk pad. Um, it's meant for a wall, but I really like this cushiony give as a writing surface. 
Here is an all new accordion pouch, an all new accordion pouch. This one, it doesn't say what the name of this, yeah, Cool Rainbow. I love these colors. I love these colors. So you can store pens, cosmetics, any little tools that you just wanna keep from getting lost. You could even separate Legos in here. So, I mean, the, the uses are limitless, really, as long as it's about this long or longer. Like, well, that's not gonna help. Let's use this one. It's eight inches wide. I mean, yeah, wide. And it's four and a half inches tall. So it has handles on the outside, which help you to open it. I've also hung these before on a doorknob or on a hook, and it makes a wonderful vertical storage unit that way. And these colors are great. So you've got two purpley things. Let's call them lilac and lavender. Um, I don't know if that's what they really are. And then sort of a denim blue and a teal and a aqua or lagoon color and then an ice blue and silver hardware goes great with this. This is great. So it's just a new color of the accordion pouch. I love accordion pouches. These are great. Cool Rainbow is the name of this one. Brand new sticker book. This is called Functional Planner Sticker Book and maybe in the future this will be called Edition 1 because they haven't had this before. So the packaging says that this is 630 colorful and mixed metallic stickers. So let's go. And let's, let's zoom back in now that we don't have that big desk pad. And I wanna try to pull up the light a little. So these are just event stickers and then you have little circle icons. So you know the do it all dots that Erin Condren used to sell or maybe still does? These are the same little icons. So you've got exclamation points and dollar signs and fork and spoon and grocery cart icons and they're on little white circles but they're gold metallic. And then what are these? Just plain boxes? Yeah, those are plain like square boxes and these are more like um, appointment stickers with a lighter colored spot on the side where you can put a time or you can put a check mark, um, whatever you want to do. And then more icons here on little circular stickers. These are more of those same do it all dots. I like this. It's kind of a throwback. So they're rose, uh, rose gold metallic on this side and there's a spray bottle, a washing machine, a first aid kit, and an envelope with a letter in it. And these are just sort of oblong rectangles with asterisks on the side. And I would say the color palette goes with the In Bloom and Flora planners. And then a bunch of payday stickers. I like these. Silver metallic on this one. And it's mostly the big squares and paydays, but then a few of the small appointment stickers. And then you have AM workout, AM workout. What is this? Now that's one sticker. So tell me why we would have one sticker that has this many AM workouts. It's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, maybe it goes on a monthly page, on your monthly calendar. So this could be week one, week two, week three, week four, and week five. That must be what that is, a monthly type of sticker. I like these colors. They're nice, and they seem like they would blend with all kinds of color schemes that you might want to use. And these are all just longer rectangles and then checklists. So I want to know, what does this fit? We want to know, we have to test this. Does it fit the hourly planner? No. The circles are too far apart for that, which makes me think compact vertical. Let's try compact vertical and see if that's what it is. Need to zoom in so you can really tell. Yes, it fits the compact vertical. That's what it is. Bingo. 
A lot of people are gonna get excited about those. It fits the compact vertical. I will keep my compact vertical here just so that we can test other stickers as well. All right. Then on this side, just empty rectangles and more icons. So you've got a closed envelope, open envelope, which we've had before, so there's more of those. Some pills, like prescription pills, and then little hearts. Rose gold metallic on this page. And transparent dots in like flora colors. Boy, if I had not already set up my ECLP for the coming academic year, I would use these to cover up dates. I might not use the darkest one, but maybe I would, I don't know. But these are transparent dots that you put on anything that you want, but what I like to use them for is this area. It might be too big in a compact vertical, but we can try one. I'm curious to see if you can actually see through this red one. Yeah, you can see through it but this is a tiny bit big I think for the compact vertical but it will work especially if you are spacing them like every other week or something it would work should we try a lighter one we should right let's try this tan one neat have we ever had tan transparent dots from Erin Condren. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And it goes so well with this planner. With a bloom, an in bloom. It might be a slightly too big circle for the smaller planners, like the A5 size planners, but probably pretty perfect in the 7x9. But in terms of color scheme, if you have an in bloom or a flora, it's going to go great. All right, let's keep going. Today's focus, weekly chores, goals, priorities, important to do, just a variety, and you get more of those. And I assume that they're going to be the same distance apart. Let's take one and compare it. This is gold here, and on this new one, it's silver. No, it's not the same. Okay, so these are probably going to fit in the hourly. Let's check that. See, this is very important info. I like it when we know which planners or books the stickers go with. We need to zoom in to do this test. Here we go. All right, does it go in the hourly? Yes, it does. This goes in the hourly. It goes in the hourly. It's really good in the hourly. So I didn't push it down all the way because I'm, I'm not ready to use it yet. So that's what this sheet is for, your hourly, at least the check boxes. And these are an inch and a half wide, so they're going to fit in your columns on your vertical or your hourly. So they're a little more narrow than the columns in the, sorry, they're a little more narrow than the columns in the hourly, but that's how planner stickers always are with the hourly. They will bump right up against the edge of vertical planners. And they're going to be slightly too tall for your horizontal planners, but you can get artsy with those and kind of stagger them and offset them Weekend stickers with gold metallic, today's routine, today, priorities, and then blank ones. And then these are just sort of large rectangles. And oh, do we need to get out another planner and see what this fits with? Because it looks different than that silver one. We're gonna have to find out what does the rose gold go with? Not the compact vertical. And that is exactly right. This one, the rose gold one goes, it fits the lines in the hourly seven by nine planner. Here's a neat sticker if you've got a busy day with a lot of appointments. You've got three little skinny stickers that have a space for your time and then a, an appointment or a call in the larger box. That's neat. And then make this 
little three box thing, anything you want, as you can do with these really giant ones. More icons. So now you've got the weight for your exercise icon, a silver heart, a present, so that's good for birthdays, and then television icon. These are mostly blank, except down here you have two todays, two to-dos, two goals, and two errands, headers. And then here's a long checklist, very long checklist, and a shorter checklist. Matches that size there. This is just a long sticker, and a square, a square, and event sticker. And these are washi strips. So you've got one that has little gold metallic stripes on it horizontally. You could use it horizontally or vertically. And then you've got one that's more like the washi tape that is this kind where it's half metallic and half color, but it's still just one strip. And then here we have some event stickers. And these are like the ones on the first page where you have like a, a more pale area on the left side. And then rose gold accents here with a striped washi and one that's half metallic and half solid color. And that's the last page. Now I am a fan of this sticker book. I'm especially a fan of the, uh, somewhere along here I've messed up how these pages turn. Um, I'm especially a fan of these little icons and these stickers and all this stuff and the paydays. I love the payday ones. The ones that I'm least likely to use are this one because there's only like one of those. So it's kind of like a random sticker. So if you got hooked on it, you would only have this one. You wouldn't want to have one every month. Um, so I'm least a fan of that. I love the checklists that fit either compact, vertical, or hourly. So the first checklist that we had were the ones that fit the compact vertical. This one, the gold fits the compact vertical. And then the rose gold and the silver fit the hourly planner. So that's how that goes. And But the window-shaped ones, I haven't used any of these yet from the other new sticker books. Maybe I'm going to turn into a huge fan of those. I don't know. But um, I'm especially fond of the ones that are more plain. So, anyway, this is a great sticker book. I think this is going to be a hit. It's color blends on the outside. I'm probably going, since I've got my pages messed up a little bit, I'm probably going to just go ahead and tear them all out and use this as a folder. Like that. I like that much better. So I think you ought to grab actually one of these functional planner sticker books because it's really cool and it's the first of its kind. So I'm going to use this heavily. Here are some new sticky note pads. Now this one we've seen because it was in our summer seasonal surprise box and it's a really cool item. This, it's sticky notes that have self-care habits or whatever you want to use it for honestly with a checklist and this week's joy down at the bottom. So now it is available. This was a sneak peek in the surprise box. So now it is available on the website. So this one's new. And I love the little flowers around the edges here. Love the decoration. It says this week's projects and exams. And you put the date here. And then you write the project or exam. And then you check if it's a project or exam if you want to. And then your prep to-do list. And then an empty box here for anything else that you need. Like the professor's email address or whatever. And it's made by Post-it. Now, I hesitate to open this because I'm not a student, and I have some piano students in my studio. This one's a little bit bent right here. That often happens to the Ophelia boxes. Um, no, that's fixed. Um, but I have some piano students that I think would be able to use this more than I will. So I want to leave it in the package for them and give it to them. But I thought I would point out that it is Post-it brand. So this week's projects and exams, and it's got flowers on it. They may come out with one that's not as feminine or floral. If you have someone who prefers a more minimal look, minimalistic or simple look. So anyway, you know it's going to be good sticky because it's made by Post-it. So I like these. And I'm going to put this with the next thing I'm going to show you, which is going to be a gift to one of my piano students. 
So the next thing I wanna show you is this academic planner and the academic planners have already launched. So this is not a brand new cover design, but it is a new cover design. And it is a great planner. I was not one of the affiliates who reviewed the academic planners this year. So this is my first time getting my hands on one for this current year. So let's flip through it and take a look. So I can tell that this one's going to be color blends because look at how the color goes from orangey on this side over to kind of a pale teal on that side. So that's like the look of color blends. Proudly made in the USA. That is the case with all of your coiled Erin Condren planners. These are hand coiled in the USA with paper from a USA factory called Mohawk Mills. So you've got a, a place for name and school and then your school year at a glance, way more than your school year. It starts on July, 2022 and goes through December, 2023. Color blends up there that you can write on. So if you need that space, you don't have to just leave it as decoration. And then your class schedule. So you've got a list of holidays and awareness days over here, heritage days, and then your class schedule. So for the class schedule, you get front and back and it is, you know, this is like from one semester. So you say which semester it is, the start date, the end date, the time of your courses, the course name, teacher, location, and credits. I would put my teacher's email address in there, honestly, I think. And then notes down here at the bottom. And here is for the next semester, same information. Then a blank notes page. Then we go into August. So. A lot of schools, I would say most of the colleges around here in Virginia begin in August. So it has an August start date, very plain layout except for the color in the word August and this header. And you've got holidays written in on the calendar. And then for August, you have like, this is the dashboard for the academic planner. It's different than the life planner. So your dashboard includes goals, events, notes, projects and exams. And this is laid out just like that snap-in dashboard that we played around with and wrote on with the white pen. So if you need more of the project and exam layout, grab that snap-in dashboard and include it with this. I will probably do that because I don't have projects and exams. So, and I'm going to need to give away one of those white pens. Wah. Oh. Okay, but I'll do it. I'll do it. I love my students, so I will do that. And here's what your weekly layout looks like. It's super cool. I've always loved this layout. Um, the only thing about it that is not as awesome as maybe a life planner in for some people is that Saturday and Sunday don't have as much room. But it's just a great layout. It's kind of the best of vertical and horizontal because you have lines You've got like a spot here that seems to be an inch and a half, so it would work with planner stickers. Let's take a peek at that and verify it. Let me see. I cannot see, okay, yeah. That's an inch and a half. That column's an inch and a half. This column is also an inch and a half. So you get your planner stickers, your standard planner stickers will fit in the first column and in both of these columns and also in your to-do column. And then this is just a bigger box that you can write in. And it's just great to feel organized when you're overwhelmed with all your new classes and syllabus, syllabi, um, to be able to get things recorded and mapped out. So you can see where you want to be. Look at the notes pages here at the end. So you can see where you want to be at certain checkpoints along the way in getting your projects finished or your exams studied for. Look at the beautiful tab for September. And here's the September layout. It's exactly the same after this. So it's like your planning page, your projects and exam page, and then bam, you're into the weekly layout. And at the end of the month, you get more notes pages than you would in a life planner. Really a practical book. Love it. So let's just quickly look at the colors of the tabs. Here's November, December, January. I wonder if there's anything new in January. No. I thought maybe there might be a class schedule over here in January, but they keep that all in the front. 
I guess that's smart because different schools might have different months to start their second semester. Because honestly, some um, schools have like what they call a J term, at least around here. So January is just a one month intensive term for maybe one thing, like studying abroad or doing a special project or taking a class at a much more accelerated pace. So there's March, April, and May, and June. So you get a whole year and July. And then what happens after July? Oh, August. Are we going to get much of August? Because we started with August. Let's see. We get the month view, projects and exams, and how much? Oh, wow. Wow. So this is a 13-month planner. 13. All right. And then after that August, we have just the two notes pages. Nope. A few more. A few more. There's a random purple thing right here because August normally has the purple September scheme right after it. And so I don't know if they meant to do that, but there's a little purple right there. And then stickers. All right, so look at the color blend style of stickers. These are an inch and a half wide, so they will fit in that column that I showed you. Several columns. Exam, test, read, study guide, no class, midterm, quiz, paper due, study, and vacation. You get one sheet of stickers. I wish there were two, one for each semester. But anyway, you get one. And then this is a wipe off surface. You can use wet erase markers there. And so that's the academic planner. So we have a lot of new writing tools that I'm really excited to test. But before we get to those, one more thing that we're gonna go over. So these are one new product and one new-ish product. This is a three subject notebook. So very handy for the school year, and it would be great for students or teachers or parents or just anybody, and it doesn't have to be subjects. It can be, if you're using it for your household, it could be just, you know, different areas of your household. Progress is impossible without change. What you do today can improve all your tomorrows, and if a plan doesn't work, change the plan, not the goal, and a sheet of stickers in the back. All of this is lined. So it's a three subject notebook and I think you probably got a little peek at something that was slightly different when I got to the tabbed page. So we'll look at that. So on the tabbed page, you've got this. So it's a completely blank um, productivity page or dashboard page. I like to call, call it a dashboard page. So there's a large box here with lines and then a checklist box and a blank box and a dot grid box. So you can use this to illustrate certain elements of the subject that you're using this section for. And then you get the same thing on the back of the tab here. So it's a thicker page too. So they call this the, not the productivity layout, but what is it? The lined, I don't know what they call it, but it's just a regular lined layout and you've got that dashboard on the back of every one of the tabbed pages as well as stickers that are an inch and a half wide that you can use to maybe make headers if you're doing a chart or making a list and want to categorize things you can use these for your category headers so this is a three subject notebook and the tabs are purple lagoon and coral and this cover says progress not perfection and it's a cute little um, design that looks painted to me it has an interchangeable cover so if you don't like this cover and you have other Erin Condren covers you can just pop it off and pop a new one on so these do not they're not permanent you can replace them with the season or just whenever you feel like changing it so I have a notebook that I carry around with me constantly and I put a summer one on it for the summer. So that's the three subject notebook. It's a seven by nine book. This is a cool new thing and the coil is not metal. So that is how they're going to keep the price point down because this is aimed at younger people. But I honestly believe adults are going to love this. And they have it marketed as a kid's thing, like a middle schooler's product. But I really believe it's for anybody. 
So it says kids reading log. So many books, so little time. They have had a product like this before, but this is slightly different in my opinion. You've got the, I, I mean, it, not just my opinion. I think it honestly is just a slightly different book. So we have rainbows here that coordinate with the cover and about me. My name is, my age when I started this log, my age when I finished this log, I live in, and this is me. So you can put a picture, draw a picture, whatever. My top five favorite books are, some of my favorite book characters are, some of my favorite genres are, some of my favorite authors are, and some of my favorite places to read are. Then my reading goals. Goal started, goal completed. Now this would be really helpful for school. If you have an intensive reading program, you have some deadlines um, probably, and this will be super helpful for school, my reading goals. So you have one, two, three, four of those pages. And then you go into a reading log. So date, book title, author, and minutes read. So I would, I would probably just put pages read instead of minutes read, but whatever. You can just, you know, use that column how you like it. And then another reading log and more. And everyone has a different color header to it. This is an A5 size book. The cover is interchangeable on this one also, even though this is just a plastic coil to get the price down a little bit. I love all this. Wow, so much room for reading. Now this could all be one book. So if you have a child who it struggles reading and they've got chapter books or something that are rather long, this could all be the same book title and all the same author. And they just, you know, would put their progress over here in the minutes read or what I would do is pages read. And then your next section is book reviews. So they get to be a book reviewer at this point. So all of these are the same. They're just different colors. So let's just look at one. The book rating overall out of five stars, you'll color in your stars. And then the date you started it, the date you finished it, the title, the author, the genre, how many pages. I read this book for what? School, a reading challenge, fun, or something else. What is the reading level? I recommend this book, yes or no. What was the book about? put that here. So even though they're having fun doing it, they're building valuable skills here when they're having to put in their own words what the book is about. My favorite part of this book here, thoughts, quotes, or doodles about this book. So honestly, you could keep this open as you're reading the book and when you get favorite quotes, you could jot them down as you go. Or favorite characters, you could draw pictures of what you think they look like or the town they're in or whatever. So this one's pink and then it's more like a dusty rose and then a coral. The colors just keep changing. Isn't that fun? So look at all this. You get all these book reviews. So if you have a, a child who loves to read or if you yourself love to read and you don't think this is too childish, because I don't, I do not think this is childish at all, then grab this thing, it's great. Thoughts, quotes, doodles about the book. So that's the last one of the book reviews. Then you get book lists. So my favorite books ever, book title and author. You can list your books here and here. Same thing here. Different color headers each time we turn the page. And then it looks like something's gonna change here. Books I want to read. So your want to read list and check boxes for when you do get to it. Lots of these pages too. What a fun book. And even though this might last them for years and years, you can freshen it up with a new cover whenever you want to. So this is the kids reading log and you can actually, if you wanna give this to somebody who is going to be offended by kids, then get yourself a sticker, cover that up. Um, or just tear that page out, you would have to sacrifice the about me. So I would cover that up with a sticker and just make it my reading log. All right, love this book. It's got three tabbed sections, love it. Okay, so many new writing tools. We've already looked at the white ones, but I brought them back out just to remind you. So we're gonna do pen tests with all of these. So let's start with the one that we've seen before. This was a sneak peek in the seasonal surprise box, the summer one. And actually I've got my purple one out here. 
is it exactly the same? I think it is. I think these are the same two colors that were in the seasonal surprise box. So the cool thing about them, there's a couple cool things. For one thing, it's a clicker. I like a clicker. And the little pen clip thing is like this. So you can clip it onto stuff pretty easily or your pocket or whatever, or, a, or a, um, like a pouch inside your purse. It has this gripper right here, which I like. And then the cool thing about the ink is that it changes. So you've got two or three colors in here. It's like blue, pink, and purple. And they all just kind of blend together. So I remember when I reviewed this that I couldn't quite tell if it was two or three colors on this one, but with the new one, I can, I can definitely see a distinction between blue and purple. So what this means is when you're writing, let me use the one that I've already started. When you're writing, you get a blend of those colors. So I'm gonna zoom in for you. You get a blend of these colors. So this is, what do they call it? The Rainbow Gel Pen. And every time you write, it might look slightly different. So here is Rainbow Gel Pen, the blue one, purple one, pink one. <laughs> it's all of those colors blended. Now, if we write Rainbow Gel Pen again, it might look slightly different. So the color is basically the same thing. It's kind of periwinkle when you blend them all together. But I know that as I've written with this, sometimes I will write and then come back to it several hours later and add something to a list. And it either goes from purple to blue or blue to purple. It's just, you know, it varies. It's kind of a fun pen in that respect. And then this one, I don't have the other one down here right now, so I'm going to go ahead and use the brand new one, is a combination of pink and yellow and orange. So this is also a rainbow. Oh, wow. Now this one, you can see all the different colors. This one is super neat. Looky there. It started off pink and then it went orangey as we went along. I wonder if you shake it, if it probably not, but let's just do it again. This time it started orange and it also probably makes a slight difference at the angle that you hold it. So there was definitely a difference there between those two. So let me just change the angle. Let's write R, turn it a little, R, turn it, R, turn it a little. Okay, so there is a, a slight difference going from orange to pink there. And if I did the turning trick with this one, maybe we would see more difference. R, turn, R, turn, R, turn. Less difference with the blue one, but I can see a small difference. Okay, so this is one new thing, but it was a sneak peek in the seasonal surprise box. So happy day if you are one of the people who wished you had gotten that summer seasonal surprise box and missed out because this was a sneak peek. All right, the next new item is the set of metallic ballpoint pens. And I always just kind of think, ugh, when something is not a gel pen, if it's um, ballpoint instead. But I did test these and when I first got the, the um, box uh, yesterday because I wondered what it meant by magnetic. So the magnetic part of it is just how the lid jumps on. So watch, see? And it does the same thing at the base so it doesn't fall off. All right, so I ended up, because I tested that part of it, I ended up writing with it, and it has a deeper ink. Look at this. And I did notice, too, I tried it on two different types of paper. You know, Erin Condren's planner paper has some tooth to it. It's a little textury, and so it works best if you go slowly on this textury paper, but if you write on a smoother paper, you get the same deep color without having to go so slowly. So let's show you that. This is the Hello Kitty post-it notepad or sticky notepad, and it's a lot smoother. So if we write with this, when I started to write metallic, 
So let's finish that word and say no. This is the magnetic. It looks a little different, doesn't it? So I can write faster without it skipping or anything, but it's not as deep and dark on this paper as it is on the Mohawk paper. Interesting. It's a really inky pen, which is what I like about gel pens. So if a ballpoint pen is going to be nice and dark and inky, I like a ballpoint pen. This feels nice. It's gold here. It's refillable. You just unscrew this tip and here is the type of refill. I'm sure the website will specify exactly what the inches are on it, but I have a little drawer of pen refills and I bet you one of those is going to work. Now the purple one is exactly the same. It's just a different color and you've got three colors here. This like kind of pinkish purple, purpley purple or bluey purple and then a blush here. And the magnet enables that to just kind of snap in place. And it probably writes exactly the same way. Yes, it does. And then here, let's don't write the whole thing because it takes me forever to write. But this, it's deeper on the Erin Condren paper. And it also skips a tiny bit on Erin Condren paper. So you just have to go slower. So if you have like a moxie life, if you have a day designer, it's gonna work splendidly. See, look how it, no skipping on the smoother paper. It makes a difference. And then listen to this. Let's do it again. Did you see it pull without me pushing it? That is so fun. Love it. So these are magnetic ballpoint pens. Now look at this totally different thing. Color changing brush pens six pack. Write it down, plan it out, color it in, change it up. And apparently you're gonna be able to do this sort of thing. Gold to red, tangerine to gold, red to lemon, teal to kelly green, navy to cerulean, iris to fuchsia. Okay, here's what they look like. They're kind of big. All right, so let's start here with, let's go in, um, let's do like, the warm tones and then the cool tones. So let's do the warm tones first of all. So you got a brush tip here. What's this side look like? It's just white. Okay, this is gonna be like um, disappearing ink or something. That's neat. Beautiful color. And then let's do the orange one. These would be great for coloring. Maybe even for highlighting, I'm not sure. I'll have to check it out. And then the yellow one. Okay. Now this side, white, white, white. So it's probably a certain chemical in that's the same in all of these, that's what I'm guessing. So let's do this, let's go. Whoa, look how fun, oh my goodness, look at that. It appears as the, whatever it is that's on the white side sets. Look at that, how fun, that is fun. Now, I doubt anything would be different with this. So let's just put little dots. Yes, nothing's different. So these white tips are the same, regardless of which pen you're using. This is way fun. Let's use the other one and do what? Let's just do dashes. That is really fun. Now, obvious applications for art, but what about for planning? Like, could you do like, do that and then go. Now these nest, that's good. I like it when tops nest like that. Yep, 
You could use it in your planner. I don't know if I would want to use it in my planner, but you certainly could. It's really neat. That's really neat. Let's do the cooler tones now. So there's a blue, a purple, and a green. Let's try these out. Beautiful color. Really beautiful color. We're gonna have to see if these bled through also. I feel like they are gonna bleed. There is a difference there. I hope you can see it. The second one was purple. Oh, I love this one. This is like teal or lagoon. Okay. Here are the colors. There's three different colors. Let's go like, let's do a different design this time. That's neat, really neat. The hardest one to see is this one. You go to like a green from teal, but you can definitely see it. It's just, I don't know how clear it would be for writing purposes, um, but you can, you can see it. Well, let's just do this, make a design. I just think kids would love these. That's really neat. Now let's do, let's write with one. That We'll try that one, but I, that's the one that's hardest to see. I could think it was this. They're not really fine tip, like the um, white side that you would write with. It's not super fine tip, so you're gonna wanna probably use it for a header and stay inside that color because if you dip down, the white doesn't do anything on just regular paper. You have to be on this to get the chemical reaction. Yeah, you can't see that one as well, but it says payday. I wouldn't use that one to write with. I would just use it to color or make some kind of decoration with, but let's do payday with this. Oh, look. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. You see that? You can do the white first. Maybe you're supposed to do the white first. Maybe that's the whole deal, but how could you see what you're writing? Okay, because it came through, see? Right there, but let's do this. Let's write payday, P, and you just have to kind of trust where you're writing because you cannot see it. All right, payday, and then let's go where did I start? I don't know. Oh, it must have been up here. Yeah, I kind of lost track of where I wrote it. All right, let's try it again. I'm going to do it right underneath that. Let's do the purple one. This is so fun. This seems like a great stocking stuffer for kids. Honestly, this is a fun gift. So kids could use this for test, whatever they want to write. It's just fun. It's fun. I don't know how practical it is. Now let's see what it looks like on the other side. Yeah, you definitely get some bleed through. You get some. And then what was this right here? The magnetic ballpoint has a little bit of bleed through too. A little bit. Definitely not those gel pens, no bleed through there. All right, let's try the others. Here's the first of two different um, sets that I'm very excited about. These are called fine liners, and it says that they are 0.4, so they're very fine, ultra fine. 0.4 millimeters, and then there are 10 colors. And the case is kind of cool. It has this little plastic sleeve on it, that kind of keeps it from doing what I'm about to do, but this pulls back and then it snaps like that. So we can just take that off and forget about it. Don't need that, but the colors are probably not written on the pens, but look how pretty that pen is. 
all of these seem to have a theme or three of them do the wet erase markers and the brush pens um, all have a white barrel with silver mid-century circles outlines on them so they're all going to match but the bummer is guess what the color is not written on the pen so you're going to want to take a sharpie most likely or other permanent pen and just write the name of the color on it. I mean, of course, this one's not going to be difficult because it's the only yellow one. It's marigold. But when you get into these colors, it is difficult to tell them apart just by the look of the ink. So I would label them with a, with a Sharpie. All right, so let's test these out. We need 10 lines. So I don't know if this should stay. Let's do it right here. So this is Marigold, feels amazing. And the tip looks like this, very fine tip. I really like that. And the top did nest here on the bottom, so you're not going to lose the top probably. This one is called Garnet, one T or two. I think it's two, although I really cannot see that tiny writing pretty color. This one is called purple. Love these. This is a great pen for your planner, I think. We're going to see if they bleed through in a minute. This one is called amethyst. Then we're going to get black. Just pretty. These are pretty. This one is um, Dusk. Oh, beautiful. That is, I think it might be the wrong one though. Honestly, it looks like Cerulean or Aquamarine. Ah, that might not be Dusk. These might be in the wrong order. And then this one is supposed to be Navy. That looks Navy to me. This one is supposed to be Cerulean. I have a feeling that was Cerulean. Yeah, I think this one's actually Dusk. But honestly, this is Dusk. And the Dusk is Cerulean. So this is why they need to be labeled also. And I don't see it anywhere. Yeah, they're not labeled. And then this one is aloe. Maybe. It also could be aquamarine, but I do think that's aloe. I think that's right. And this one, aquamarine. Yeah. And these are the colorful fine liner pens. Let's just put a header up here. Colorful fine liner pens, and then we're going to look at the back of the page. No bleed through, they're right here. No bleed through. So these will be great in your planner. All right, let's test the next thing. Now, I will be coming through. They're just so pretty. They're so pretty. I'm not going to put them back in the box. I'm, I'm going to set them on my desk because they're gorgeous but they have a stand. So this would be great for a dorm, you know, um, as you could, or for coloring. You could set these in here and, oh, there's little grooves too. So this is not just like a, like if you take out two, these are not gonna slide around. This is a nice case. So you could set it like that. I think that's how it would work. There's also this part, I don't know if it does anything. I think it just does that but maybe you go like oh well there you go if you do that with it then it's got to stand like this sort of yeah there you go it's kind of neat but I'm not going to use mine this way mine are coming out because I think the barrels are more beautiful than the box I love this mid-century circles look so these are going to go in an acrylic up on my desk. All right, and last of all, we have these really fun looking pastel square highlighters. Four colors, sage, mauve or mauve, orange sherbet, and lavender. 
Let's get these out. Look at those. They're really just neat looking. They're rounded, so this part's not square. It must be talking about the chisel on it as being square. This is really neat, and there's an asterisk right here. So each one has a little white asterisk on it that you can barely see. Maybe it's clear, I don't even know if it's a white asterisk, but they're kind of short and cute. They are four and a half inches tall. Now let's see if this happens. Yeah, you can nest it. Here's what your tip looks like. So I don't know if you call that a square. Honestly, I don't know why they're called square. I love this clear part right here where you can see the ink through it. So this one is the, I mean, you can make a square with it if you just highlight like that. So maybe that's why it's called a square. So that's the lavender one. We make a long line. There we go. And then this one is orange sherbet. We'll make a few little squares. That's a lovely color. It's not like a neon orange. It's not like this rainbow gel pen right, wrote right there. It's calmer. This one is mauve or mauve. This will look great with your flora or your in bloom planner or any other one, honestly. This one is sage. Let's do this since we can. It feels super. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to do a test here. Let's see if it makes this ballpoint pen smear. No, it didn't smear. Let's try another one. It did not smear. Wonder if it will smear a gel pen. Let's use a pilot. Now to be fair, we should write this twice and let, let the first one dry a while. All right, let's try this. Yep, there's a little bit of smearing here on this one and it got on this, on the highlighter. So let's try to just rub that off. Okay, now we're gonna try this one. Not as much smearing. So that's just how it normally goes with gel pens, but it did not smear the ballpoint. Interesting to note. So these are so cool. Now I prefer these in a way to the longer highlighters because of how the lid sticks on the end. I love that. And these are adorable. They are adorable. I think these are going to go in my piano teaching studio, most likely, because I highlight things on the kids' music a lot, and this is just going to be really nice. Four colors for them to choose. I'll let, their choose, let them choose their own. But right now, they're so cute, they're going to go in an acrylic pen cup. So here's a little recap of everything that was included in the writing tools with the exception of the white wet erase markers. So we tested these on the snap-in dashboards that were dark. Note to self, on the smooth paper, the metallic ballpoint pen did smear. So look, when I used it on the Erin Condren paper that has a little bit more texture to it, it did not smear, but it did a little bit on the smooth paper. So probably you wanna use the same process that we normally do use. I'm just doing this to get the black off of it, but you want to put your highlighter down first and then right on top like that. Then you won't have any smearing at all. Just highlight first. Not to be a troublemaker, but let's just recap the little thing that we discussed earlier. Are we going to be getting a vertical layout for the six ring A5 agenda? And if so, are we also going to be getting an hourly layout for the A5 six ring agenda? 
this packaging has really got me thinking. That's the end of this video. I've gone through everything that was in the box with the exception of one item, which I've been told that I can't share until later. So there is a brand new product that is yet to be reviewed. But I thank you for watching. I know I did not include prices. That is because in the past when I have included prices, sometimes they were incorrect. And then when you go to the website, you're either disappointed or happily surprised in it. I just don't want to have to fool with that. So what we're going to do is just look at the website when these products launch, which is on July 6th, to get the prices. And I know other affiliates are sharing prices um, anyway, so it'll be pretty easy to find out what the prices are so you can plan ahead if you like. And I thank you so much for watching. I hope you will feel free to give me any questions that you have in the comments. And thank you to the Erin Condren team once again for allowing me to review these beautiful new products. I really had fun testing them all out and sharing them with you guys. So I'll see you again again next time. Bye-bye.